Hello, Mr. Mr. Rainer, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so these are the champagne glasses. Champagne. The fine wine. Champagne is not good. Maybe alcohol, okay. Yeah, it's not good. Okay, just imagine there are glasses. The glasses and then you put the water. There in. is apple juice. Apple juice, okay, apple juice. Apple juice, right? And then it's stack apple juice. So stack glasses like that, right? It's so one, two. It's better if it's water to be honest. Okay. <laughs> water. One glass, two glasses, three glasses, and so Cream on. Green water. So on, okay? So this is the row number zero, row number one, row number two. So everything starts with zero, index zero. So this is the column zero, column one, column zero, column one, column two. Okay? For each row, the column starts with zero as well. So the question is that we, if we pour the water at the top glass, Obviously, if we pour one, right? So it will only stay here. If we keep pouring, for example, if we pour two, what happened? So two, obviously this glass can hold only water one, right? Amount, okay, amount one. So what happened to the other one? Right? This glass is capacity is one, and I pour two amount of water, two in there. Right, so you overflow, right? Make sense? Half and then half, so and what so happened to another half? So th these will be all of these will be filled, but these won't. Yeah, yeah, okay, so it's basically it's yeah. like that, right? What makes sense? Because, because one plus one is two, but two cups, so you split, so and two divided by one, no, two, div wait, two divided by two is one, so one cup. It's oh, okay, uh, but so, the, those won't overflow. Okay. Where is it stacking on top of each other? Yeah, stack. It's basically stacked like that. So look, it's if very I very unclear to be honest. Okay, so look, if it overflows, it will overflow in two directions, right? So this this cup only overflows two directions. Two directions. How can it do that? Because then there will have to be a floating cup. Wait, what if there? Has what if there is? They flow over. No, no, no. So why this is? So what happened no, when no, this is? But then it has to be a floating cup. Yeah. Because you see, how is it going to float? Yeah, yeah, but so I'm just saying. You see, that is it's a stack in top of each other. But but if if it, if you can if a middle row uh can still um overflowing both ways yes then that means then the top uh, cup is floating or levitating or something so you need something to hang so it's not really like um stacking on top of each other so just imagine what happened if you put the water on the top one when it overflows it flows in two directions right and then when these but one overflows cup, one cup might have what one cup might have more than another like this like this cup with green green this cup might overflow in here but this cup won't probably won't be finished because no, it's no, split no. why and then yeah, because this, it, it and then be, this and then that split. yeah because it might not be split evenly okay split evenly that's what i'm saying split evenly. how could that happen in real life just it imagine was, okay forget in, reality. in reality okay so just imagine okay Imagine, split evenly. And we want to know, we want to know, we're given this uh, input here, we want to know the amount of water in a particular glass. How do we solve this problem? I know, what, I know what's happening, but I don't know what yeah, to find out. Yeah, 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 you explain, the thing is, you explained what's happening, but you yeah. don't even, you didn't okay. even, but you either didn't explain it clearly, or, or did not say anything at all was actually the question we're trying to figure out. Let me explain. Let me try that one more time. Yeah, but okay. if, it feels like you didn't even actually explain anything about the question. Okay. No problem. Mm. So the scenario is that we stack the glasses. We stack the glasses in the, in the pyramid. We put the water, like amount of water. Like one is one glass of water. Two is two glasses of water on the top glass. And we want to find out the amount of water in a particular glass. Okay? Okay, you could just hold us out, yeah. Yeah? Makes sense? So for example, if we 
Pour only one glass of water on the top one, and we want to find out the row number one, color number one, which is row number one, color number one here. So it should return zero because no water overflows to here. The water split evenly on both sides, right? It overflows evenly on both sides. We know that. So, are we clear about we this? No, we already know that. Okay. Any thoughts? No. <laughs> Any thoughts? How can we solve this question? Actually, this is not like a coding just, question. This is like a mathematic question. We do math. You just, you just work out a process and then... Work out a process? Uh, how, in which direction? You need to uh, start from top to bottom. From top to bottom, yeah. We can just look, for example, if we give it a hundred, right? Give it a hundred, then we calculate how much water stays in there. How much water stays in there? A hundred. How much water stays in there? One. One, obviously, right? Why not? And how much overflows? 99 99 so 99 goes uh how, how much goes to the left how much goes to the right 40 oh. go 40 and half right 40 and a half right okay so here how much water stays in the water uh, in the glass one one okay how much water overflows lots you minus one and divided by two right right again you minus one and divided by two so you add it up this way this is top down uh, from from here top to the bottom, yeah, and we can implement this just using this, okay. But this is top down in the process, but we implement it is bottom up. Remember the dynamic programming is is kind of like reverse, right? Very good. Um, so one class we have to figure out two things: how much water stays in there, and how much water is overflowed. Lots. Okay. So when we calculate this, for example, this one. Well, we want to calculate this class, right? Just leave that the computer. I want to find out the water here, right? So the first thing to know is that how much water coming from which two classes? How much water coming home from which? Uh, two up top. Yeah, these two classes. Apart from, apart from okay, the, and that's it. Apart from the one on the top. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Look, because we want to find out the water stays in here, we need to find out the number of water, the amount of water overflows from these two. And then if we want to find out the water overflows, we need to find out the water overflow from the one above, right? So look at this one. This one depends on the shoulder. Shoulder? Shoulder. Okay, okay, shoulder. So look, not shoulder. Look, 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 <laughs> look, this one, this class depends on two glasses on the shoulder. This on the two shoulders. So what? Shoulder. Shoulder. So what kind of? This. Do you do you still remember? Plural. Okay. Do you still and uh, remember the the thing which triangle we talk about a similar stru uh, similar uh, structure? Uh, Pascal. Pascal triangle. Okay. Let me put the Pascal triangle. Okay. The first row is one and one 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 two one one three three one one four six four one. Right. Each number is the sum of the two numbers on its shoulders above it right above it so look this is a very interesting triangle so one thing you you notice is that the first row Ching. look the first row is 11 to the power of zero the second row is 11 to the power of one the third row is 11 to the power of two right one to one right 11 times 11 and then you notice 11 to the power of three you know this, 11 to the power of 4. So basically, 11 times 4 times is 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Okay? And this goes on, right? This is very interesting, okay? Of course, it has other many, uh, many other interesting properties, but this is one of the most obvious ones, okay? So, Not obvious. So very interestingly, this one is similar, right? Not really obvious. So we, we can solve this using this uh, Plus, thing. it's not very obvious. The computer does not store the numbers in the triangle. The computer has this arrays, a two-dimensional arrays, it's basically like a square number. So we just have to tilt it. In computer, it stores the number like this. 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, right? And 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, right? It's, it's basically like a triangle. So each number is the number above it and a bar on the left, right? So 4 equals 1 plus 3. 6 is 3 plus 3. 4 equals 1 plus 1, right? So same here, we need to tilt it. For each one, we need to know two things. The number, the amount of water stays in that glass and the amount of water that overflows. And with these two things, 
with these two things actually we just need to know the amount of water that overflows from uh, the overflows on on the two glasses above it and with these two numbers then we can calculate the contribution for each glass above it overflow is half is half okay and then we can calculate it okay let's let's let me write the code okay so this question may may seem very difficult right at the beginning but if actually if you actually think about it it's not that hard okay define let's say this is f amount is given right amount is somewhere we we, uh, we know that originally how much water pour on the top glass the rows a column okay so if out of range we just need to return zero right so if the c is smaller than zero the columns smaller than zero or the c is bigger than r then we return two things right the amount of water actually the amount of water overflows and the amount of water stays in the glass so this thing is to return zero zero outside the boundary right there's no point if you if you want to find out the amount of water stays in the glass and the amount of water that overflows outside this triangle am i right this triangle it's meaningless, right? The only meaningful input is inside, okay? Then, if the row is the first one, the top row, then we need to return. Okay, so given this amount of water A, how much water stays in the glass? A. Okay, <laughs> amount of water on the top glass how much water stays in the glass a it could be any number positive number the capacity is one and then a a could be anything a could be a could be 0 0.5 a could be 2 a could be 0 0.7 uh uh a but if a is greater than one then one that's right we have to check what? right we have to check we put a amount of water on the glass and we want to find out how much water stays in there, right? We need to check if the A, right? So if the A is bigger than 1, then the amount of water stays in the glass is 1, right? You that we weren't listening. Yeah, yeah, but that is true. You did... You did how much I water overflows? You did... You did... How much water overflows? If it's um, 1 or less than 0, otherwise, otherwise it's A minus 1 divided by 2. That's very good, yeah. And overflows is a minus one, but divided by two, it's contributions to to both sides, right? Yeah, very good. So, so the amount of water stays is actually a. The, the amount of water stays is actually a, and we need to compare, right? So it's actually minimum of a and one, right? Am I right? The amount of water that splits overflows, right? Overflows is is a minus one and so zero. If, so if a is nine, that will be four. Four overflows. If what? a is nine, a is nine. The overflow part would be eight, but on both sides it will be four, right? Uh, what I'm saying is that I'm you see, you see, Ryan was listening to me, but not you. Okay, okay <laughs> but do you understand this one? Yeah, it's basically the same thing, right? The minimum of a one, a one mean, means that. This is the amount of water that stays in the glass, right? Because the, the maximum you can stay is one. But the second bit, A minus one zero, the bigger one. Which, which one is bigger? This is the amount of water that overflows. Because if A is smaller than one, the overflow is zero. <laughs> Am I right? Okay? So if R equals zero, then we, we return these two things, right? So max A minus one zero and mean. This is the returning two values, the tuple, right? Overflow one and stay one equals F R minus one C, right? Look, overflow two, S two equals F R minus one C minus one, right? Look, this is the come on. These two very important. Look, I want to calculate. I want to calculate. I want to calculate F R C, right? So it needs two values, which is F R R minus one C, and here this is F R minus one C minus one. Each recursion, each call returns two things: the amount of water that overflows 
the amount of water that stays in the glass, the amount of water, the amount of water that overflows the glass, the amount of water that stays in the glass. Okay, so that's two things. S one is the amount of water stays in this glass. L two, um, the amount of water overflows from this glass. S two, the amount of water that stays in this glass. Okay, now. Now the total, the total equals O1 plus O2, but we need to times half, right? It's basically O1, it's basically O1 times half plus o, O2 times half, okay? Right? Because every glass takes half, half of the, 50% of the overflow from this glass, and 50% of overflow from this glass, right? So it's times 50%, which is 0 0.5, right? And then we just need to return, return, here, this is the same. Max t minus 1, 0, and minimum t1, right? Because each recursion, we need to return the amount of water overflows, the amount of water stays, okay? And then we need to call this function, return frc. And we want to return the second value, because the second value is, this is the number of the water, the amount of water stays, okay? This is the amount of water that overflows. Make sense? There are two values for each other because you call. Make sense, right? Near. There's one thing missing. Cash. Cash, yes. It's cool. I watch videos. It's called cash, I think. Cash? Yeah, I think it's called cash. 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 Yeah, you're probably right because E, right? It ends with E, so this uh, sounds like the, no, the, the not, letter A. Not necessarily because it has two um, letters in between. Oh, okay, but cash, cash, okay. That is I, I, oh, really what's that? Look. On videos, they okay. say it, 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 uh, but, 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 but if it's cash, then it sounds like a cake that's smushed. Oh, okay, okay, anyway, you are to <laughs> Why do we need to put a cash? Why do we need to put a cash? So it doesn't uh, repeat. So yeah, yeah, look, look, it's, it's like the Pascal triangle, the same thing, right? Look, um, how I can explain to you why it needs a, you know, wait, wait. Okay, so, look, look, this, let's say this, this one, look, let me, let me look, look at this one, here, please, please, uh, I need a, look, look, look at this one. This value, this value, come on, this value, this value is needed when we calculate it here, right? Yeah. It's also needed when we calculate this one, right? Make sense? Yeah? So if I don't catch this one, what happens? When I calculate this, when I calculate this, I need to calculate this again. If I don't catch this one, when I calculate this value, I need to... I need to cash, uh, calculate this again. So there's a duplication. There's a repeated <coughs> calculation here. So we need to cash it, remember it, minimize it. As long as we calculate it, we, we remember it in the notebook. So the next time, we can just look it up. We don't need to spend time. For example, like it could, I could Ooh. spend like five minutes calculating this value. And if I don't remember it, what happens if I calculate this? I need to, again, spend five minutes there. I don't, right? Because the value doesn't change. Why five minutes? Just an example, okay. So the I'm cash. Sure it will take like one minute or like. Okay, so so it is. Make it two seconds. So look, it's if this big one. table is very it's big. Is zero point one. If the table is very big, if we put a cash, we know the total number of stacks. The states we, we calculate is R times C divided by 2, right? Because it's a triangle, right? Okay? Yeah? So this is the top-down dynamic programming, but, but we are actually not calculating from the top class, right? Look, when you say it's top-down, right? You say top-down is a process to calculate from the top class, but this is actually top-down dynamic programming, calculating from the bottom class, and then trace back, am I right? Yeah? Yeah. So the other one, the other solution is called bottom up dynamic programming, right? We talk about that. So, bottom up doesn't so need cash, right? Look, here we want to calculate this, this class, right? We want to calculate this class. Then this class depends on these two class. And this class depending on two class. This class depending on two class. We trace back this way. This is top down dynamic programming, right? The other way is to do the opposite. So we start from here. We start from the top class. That's your approach, right? We start from the top class. 
we calculate the second uh, second row, two glasses, and then we calculate the third row, three glasses. So we coming from the top to the bottom, top glass to the bottom glass, right? So this is called bottom up dynamic programming. Make sense? Yeah? yeah. So which one is better? Which one is better? That one. Which one is better? That one. I mean, there's no preference, right? This is top-down dynamic programming. You see the recursion with the minimization, okay? Without the minimization, it's not dynamic programming, and it might not work, okay? Because, because the time limit is exponential. We are not minimizing the intermediate results, and then the time complexity will be huge, and it's not feasible, it's not practical, it's feasible, not worth okay? It's not worth it, but with the cash, Top-down dynamic programming, because you with a minimization, okay? So, yes, oh, oh. No. what have you learned today? Nothing. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, what have, what have you learned today? Um, we have glass. We have glasses, okay? Of liquid. Yeah, okay, come on, come on, okay? Say it. Quick. We have glasses of liquid and we want to, and, and they gonna, uh, it can overflow or not overflow, and we want to know how much Oh, liquid is in a specific glass. glass. Yeah, and how do we calculate that? Top. No, I mean, so basically, if we want to calculate glass, we need to know how, uh, what things. What do we need to know? <laughs> so, for example, if I want to calculate the amount of water stays in in a particular glass, what do we need to know? What do we need to know? We need to know what is going to happen when you pour the uh, amount of liquid into the top one. Yeah, and then it splits evenly. Uh, so, so how ma how much percentage, how much contribution is from two classes? Um, half half, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. So, so if we want to calculate this class, right? So, it would take fifty percent overflow from this class, and it will take fifty percent from this class. And this is the recursion with minimization. Each recursion returns two things, two things, tupper. The amount of water overflows and the amount of water stays, okay? Okay, and then we have to check, right? Because if the water stays in is less than one, then it does not overflow, okay? Simple, simple, okay. Uh, that's a simple thing. Okay, that's it for today, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Ew, you found me. Dad. Can I be your No, it's Bye-bye.